Welcome back, friends, to Studio P, a.k.a. my dining room, my favorite place to record, not only because I don't have to go anywhere, but I never really make mistakes with my equipment here. I feel like every time I leave, something always goes wrong, but it's not today. Today, I have a guest who has way more experience in this type of a thing than I do. He's created videos for quite a while, although he's big over on Facebook, a platform that I just like refuse to go back on, and I know that it's hurting me. But anyways, he's the Wisconsin guy. People don't even know that I'm from Wisconsin, but everyone knows he's from Wisconsin and they don't know hardly anything else, which is why we're here today. Welcome <laughs> to the show, Ryan Rubel. Appreciate it, brother. Happy to be here. Yeah, dude. Glad we finally <laughs> made this happen. We've been Instagram buddies for a while and I didn't honestly know who you were yeah. <laughs> until more recently. Well, thank you for actually uh, talking to me now and yeah. uh, knowing who I am. But yeah, yeah I've been, uh, been on Facebook for about 12 years. Yeah. Uh, Started up some of the very first Wisconsin pages, actually. I think it was like February 2012. Yeah. Started up a page called Meanwhile in Wisconsin because I'm very passionate about a little bit of everything Wisconsin. So yeah, dude, that, uh, that's how I got into it. I feel like a lot of the <laughs> meme pages and stuff are like really young kids. Not yeah. calling you old, but there's not that many people <laughs> that are adults like me and you that are like running these meme pages right which maybe that's why it's over on the facebook but I'll, I'll let you we'll we'll go back we'll talk more about it but in your own words who are you and what are you passionate about uh ryan rubel meanwhile in wisconsin and then uh i'm a dude that grew up in wisconsin born Chippewa and Falls raised or what area uh grew up in rhinelander i was born mm -hmm. in rhinelander uh lived oh, in okay. crandon wisconsin which is just east of there okay until i was in third grade and then uh moved to rice lake wisconsin and all those towns are north of Highway 8, so that's the real up north. So yeah. I'm an up north boy. So I grew up and uh, graduated high school from Rice Lake, and then I uh, moved to Chippewa Falls 19 years ago, and I've lived there ever since. So that's, cool. that's me. If anyone doesn't know about the Hodag, mm -hmm. it's the coolest thing ever. Like, I, want, I need to do some, like, seriously, because I went to school at North, and we were the Huskies, which is fine. Like, I mm -hmm. love dogs, don't get me wrong. And Memorial, we're the old Abe's stupid name but it's like eagles right referring right. to old abe the, the one eagle not trying to be disrespectful but kind of a silly name for like a mascot the rhinelander hodags mm -hmm. dude yeah they're the, they're the coolest thing what's the story of the hodag for anyone that isn't aware of what it is what is the hodag well it's a mythic character or like character whatever you want to call it that yeah. was probably around since the 1800s i'm pretty sure but it's actually the number one mascot in the country, voted number one mascot in the country. I bet you didn't know that. I did not know that. More than any like high school I mean, or I've college. I always thought it was the coolest yeah, one, yeah. but. So like, there you're learning something new every day, brother. Sick. <laughs> but yeah, cool. it's, it's a mythical character or whatever you call it. But uh, yeah, the Hodag. It's uh, like a big swamp monster. Yeah, yeah it's like right? a big dragon swamp monster type looking thing. It's got some big fangs. Yeah. Uh, spikes coming out of its back with a tail. So kind of like a lizard. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't know anything about it until I was driving all the way to, up to the UP. Yep. And I was like, what's this thing I'm seeing on signs? I got to take a picture with this big thing. Yep, yeah, yep. that thing's the dopest. Okay, so let's talk about the meanwhile in Wisconsin thing. Um, well, before that, what'd you do for a living? Now, I, I would assume now you pretty much just do social media full time? Or yes, no? sir. Four yeah. years ago, I okay. quit my job. So let's go doing... before that. What were you doing for work before? And then what inspired you to want to make the meanwhile Wisconsin thing? Because that wasn't like a... I'm going to make this a career move at the moment. You know what I mean? Right. It was just something you made. It was actually multiple things I was doing. Like I've always been an entrepreneur, but yeah. back in 2010, I was actually doing my own thing too. I was a top rated power seller on eBay selling smartphones for a living for six years cool. from 2010 to 2016. So in 2010, there was only 20% of the nation had smartphones. Yeah. So I knew I was on to something right there. So I uh, started buying phones off ebay in bulk and then okay. reselling them right back on ebay sure. so should we tell about how much i was selling per year because yeah, it's dude. a lot yeah so, no i'm curious <laughs> for sure yeah so i think it was probably right around three hundred fifty thousand in sales per year oh my god just because i was onto it before anybody else how did that develop then did it, you see sales slowly go down because people were actually yeah, like yeah, is that what happened yeah. everybody so then, else was catching on sure yep. so then how did that transition like what did you go from there were you just doing a bunch of just different little not side hustles because they were definitely a real hustle at that dollar mm -hmm. amount but still were you just kind of like popping around to different opportunities that you saw or what well i knew i was on to something in 2010 because 20 percent of the nation was only using smartphones and i'm right. like this is going to be huge and obviously like 
I use my smartphone to shoot like 90% of my videos now for content, but yeah. it wasn't like that back in the day, obviously, because there was like a quarter megapixel camera on your <laughs> smartphone. But yeah. but yeah, I just, uh, yeah, after the 2010, I just kept building the business bigger and bigger. And then after like the second year, I was selling like, it was like $400,000 that year, in like Whoa. 2011. And then uh, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. But then, like we said, somebody, like a bunch of other people started catching on. Yeah. And then it was harder and harder to buy used smartphones on eBay. But I did find a, a wholesaler where you had to spend, I think it was $5,000 at a time just to buy wholesale from them. Okay. And then... Uh, I think I was selling like twenty five to thirty thousand dollars a month at that time too. So it was Whoa. it was a little niche I found. Yeah. And then uh two thousand twelve I started up my social media following too while I was selling smartphones oh, at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah. So gotcha. okay. But uh yeah, I just kinda Yeah, how did that start? Was it you posting on just your own Facebook and people liked it enough that you were like, I should make a page out of this? Or did you start it off as like, this is going to be a thing and this is the direction of it and then went forward? Well, even my own personal uh, Facebook page, I started in 2006, like my private family one. Yeah. yeah. Like I was doing kind of the same thing. And I'm like, people always like loved what I was posting because it was kind of funny. And like, I was always posting ahead of people. Like if there was like breaking news, I kind of like made it funny and then post like right away before everybody. And then, uh, 2012, I like decided I was actually out ice fishing. I call it ice drinking because (laughs) this is Wisconsin. So that's what people do. I, uh, I decided to start up, uh, a page and then sell clothing off of it too, kind of like Wisconsin inspired clothing, but also make the memes to get people and the traffic two of the page like badgers and packers stuff or yeah what do you mean? okay so badgers packers hunting fishing drinking yeah. everything okay. wisconsin yeah. so but uh basically everything i love to do and yeah. i was kind of passionate about yeah. since like i was a kid obviously i wasn't drinking since i was a kid but <laughs> i mean it's wisconsin <laughs> <laughs> you never <laughs> know a little bit of that <laughs> yeah the, and then uh so it was just kind of like a meme page at first and then uh slowly started posting like photos of myself of what I was doing. Like when I, if I went to a Packer game, I'd post like, uh, me getting Lambo leaped on or me sure. doing the Lambo leap or yeah. like, I was a huge Packer fan growing up, still am yeah. uh, Packer season ticket holder. So anytime Damn, I went how to long Lambo, to wait for those tickets, <laughs> isn't well, it like a 20 year wait or something? Well, it's, it's, there's probably 200,000 people on the waiting list right That's now for I'm the saying. general admission, but I, I actually don't have the general admission seats. I have outdoor, indoor club seats, which oh. I signed up for in 2005, and I got them in 2011, right after the Packers won the Super Bowl. So I do wow. have those seats, but I did sign up in 1998 for general admission. I think I was 60,000. I think I'm number like 35,000 right now. In case so. if anybody wonders how <laughs> hardcore Packers yeah. fans are, yep. that's how hardcore. Right? <laughs> it's hard to get yeah. tickets for that. So you started developing it by like, mixing in because it's still a meme page like obviously yeah. there's more stuff to it but right. like memes and skits which are memes i guess yeah that is why it's a thing but you start sprinkling in yourself how long was it before you realized or maybe you knew at the beginning that this could be like an income thing yeah. for you i was making income right away off of apparel right away like i was selling right. pretty well sure it was basically but uh, you weren't doing your own branded stuff Right. That was all. I was a little bit. It was called Sconson Wear in 2012. (laughs) Cool. Yeah. So I had a website and everything and I didn't handle the apparel. It was all dropship from a site called Spreadshirt. Okay. So I didn't even touch it. They handled everything. I just came up with the designs, loaded the designs. They do all the work, printing, shipping, returns, everything. So I was, I don't know, I think at the peak, I was probably making like two, 2000 bucks a month just doing that. So wow yeah good for you especially the holidays even in 2012 2013 yeah yeah right around there wow so how come it took so long you said it wasn't till four years ago that you decided fully social media that would have been i guess it's 2024 now so you're talking about 2020 2019 somewhere in that era how come it took from 2012 till then that's a long window of time if you were already making money i was actually well four years ago i actually got a partnership from quick trip oh cool yeah. Quick Trip's that's the best, man. They sponsor my... the show. I think I might be the only podcast that Quick Trip sponsors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think 
honestly like and i shout them out all the time but like Paige and hayden are geniuses they like are the girls who run it yeah, nowadays I've i know like, with them They're you cool. you and chris and like some of the other people chris cruzy were earlier on mm -hmm. in the development of all of that stuff like mm -hmm. before them but nowadays if anyone doesn't follow quick trip on social media they should they're right. hilarious they're yeah. the best but yeah. anyway so you got a contract with quick trip and that what like was a light switch for you of we should do this or well what? i was actually i was doing video content for a while too like on and off but it was mostly memes and i actually didn't start going like full time into the video stuff until i met charlie baron so and we started collaborating together how long in, like was that? 2018 we started doing okay. videos together yeah so it was not like huge for me but yeah and then uh well because charlie barons at that time wasn't who charlie barons is now no, no no no. you know what i mean like yeah, this was much earlier on so what was the story of him reaching out and kind of where were each of you at in the trajectory of your careers at that <laughs> point because it wasn't like a nowadays a lot of people will look at a page right and they'll go mm. oh you got a whole bunch of followers you should feature me blah 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 right. right but like back then it was a little bit before that for either of you you weren't nearly as big as you currently right. are so what was the situation like at that point in time was he the one who was bugging you were you bugging him How'd it work out? Uh, well, we'll throw back to 2016 when uh, he first reached out to my Meanwhile Wisconsin page. So he had this voiceover. It was called, it was a Titanic voiceover of <laughs> if Jack Dawson was really from Wisconsin. Yeah, I remember. And he, he like sent it to my page and he's like, hey, dude, do you want to watch this? And if you like it, can you post it? And I watched it and I was like laughing so hard. I was crying. Yeah. Like it's so good. And then... Uh, I posted it and it blew up. I think it got like 14 million views or something Whoa. ridiculous for Charlie. But wow. I didn't know what he looked like or anything. Well, I, I I saw his Facebook profile, but I didn't sure. know who he was or anything back in 2016. But right. I thought he was he was a stand-up comedian in L.A. trying to make it. Oh, he was in L.A. at the time. Yeah, he was in oh. L.A. Okay. Uh, trying to make it. And then, uh, then like a year later, 2017... <laughs> He uh, reached out to me again, and he's like, I came up with this uh, new concept called Manitowoc Minute, and he sent me the very first video of Manitowoc Minute, and he's like, can you post it to your page again? And so I watched it, and I'm like, this is brilliant. So, That's kind of like a yeah. Wisconsin Daily Show, right? Yeah. Like, it's so like it's, a yeah, yeah. skit news kind of funny yep. thing, but yeah. Wisconsin-based? Yep. Yeah, okay. So he just make fun of the news right. in a comedic way, like a dry humor. Yeah. And then... Uh, that really took off for him. And then 2018... Because uh, he wasn't even just doing specifically <clears throat> Wisconsin content back then, mm -hmm. right? He was just doing all kinds of He was just mixing stuff. up a little bit of everything. Yeah, so, yeah. And yeah. that was around the time frame the Wisconsin stuff caught yeah. on for him. And now he's like the Wisconsin guy everyone knows of. Yep, yep. Sure. So, but yeah, so I don't know. I kind of mixed around or messed around with like video and stuff. And it was mostly photos and memes. But yeah. then Charlie and I started working together. And that's when uh, my page and... I finally started getting recognized also. So like 2018, 2019, I was on this Manitowoc Minute a few times. And then uh, I think in 20, yeah, 2019, I came up uh, with the, the idea is called Stuff Wisconsin, I'd say. Okay. And that's like the very first huge collaboration of like Wisconsin uh, content creators. So it was like me, Charlie, Chris Cruzy, uh, Alex Worley. I don't know if you follow her or not. That's mm -hmm. Charlie Barron's ex-wife. She's got a really big following. Oh, sure. Does Wisconsin content, too. And then uh, Charlie's friend, Serena. Uh, we all... I came up with the idea. I'm like, why don't we just say a bunch of one-liners that are proven on my page? So I just took a bunch of viral memes or, like, a bunch of one-liners that I had in the past. Yeah. And I just sent them to Charlie. And I'm like, dude, let's just say these yeah. and let's see what happens. And so we had, like, 15 different lines five different collaborators and it blew up to like 3.5 million views after like a couple of days so Whoa. yeah then after that i think that's kind of the style that he did and alex does and i started doing too because that was my idea brother yeah <laughs> that's right <laughs> you tell <laughs> yeah but no that's and i think uh after that charlie and i did a bunch i think we did like 15 to 20 different pieces of content yeah. but uh i haven't done anything with him in a while because he's so huge he's like nationwide now so. dude yeah he's hard to get a hold of i tried dming him <laughs> yeah and like he doesn't receive dms for people he doesn't follow and i'm right. like come on dog like yeah. i'm not nobody you're way more of a somebody but like yeah. you're in wisconsin i'm in wisconsin he was even in eau claire yep. and i was like dude we should do a podcast when you're in eau claire and then i interviewed billy deuce like his opener mm -hmm. and like good friend and watch an interview with billy 
And they were doing a podcast in Eau Claire <laughs> when I wanted to do one and I wasn't a part of it. So, Charlie, come on, man. Let's do something cool. Dude, there's a lot of stuff coming out with like Wisconsin music. And obviously country music has always had like drinking beer stuff. But mm -hmm. who are some of your favorite uh, Wisconsin musicians that are out? Well, obviously, Chris Cruzy. Yeah, <laughs> Chris is the homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've known him for about five years now, creating content. But uh, yeah, two years ago, two and a half years ago, we wrote... Uh, a song together called Buckaholic. Uh, yeah, we wrote and recorded it in his studio over yeah. in uh, at his house there. So, just a couple of dudes that like to hunt, kick back and drink and have a few and uh, live that Wisconsin lifestyle. But it's That's a good song. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's got to just continue to lean into that. Like, yeah, I yeah. know he doesn't want to be limited to being like Wisconsin, but yep. there's still more growth within Wisconsin. And everybody in Wisconsin loves that man. Right. Because he's the nicest person. Like, I don't, I've never seen him be mean to anybody ever. Right. Like, and like, like we were talking earlier, how funny he is behind the scenes, but he's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know why he doesn't play into that more. I right. don't know if he like gets a little bit nervous or awkward about wanting mm -hmm. to film it, but that dude is hilarious. Right. We did a quick trip, uh, commercial together because quick trips dope. And they let us like make whatever we want, which mm -hmm. I know you're aware of the same thing. They're like, they don't tell you what to say. They're just like, do whatever. Yep. You're like, cool. I would have talked about Quick Trip anyways. So we made a video and he's like, we should do it like the Wayne's World thing. I yeah. was like, what do you mean? I I had never seen Wayne's World. I know I'm a horrible person for that, but I had never <laughs> seen Wayne's World. Anyway, so he showed me the skit of where they're like talking about branded content, you mm -hmm. know, like I want to work with brands that don't make me do branded content. Mm -hmm. Dude, it was so funny. And that was 100% his idea. So uh, yeah, I watched that. It was actually really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's crushing it. Who are some of the other ones? I know that um, Charlie put out a, a two albums with Adam Gruel. Adam Gruel, Is that yep. his name? Yep. Horseshoes and Hand Grenades. Yeah. Um, I saw them perform it when he came to Eau Claire and yeah. they were pretty funny but are there other musicians out of Wisconsin that you're aware of there's got to be some right uh well I don't know besides Charlie and Adam who I've hung out with I'm actually I was in the music video for their very first song they ever wrote and recorded Sick. So I was what was, at what was, that? I was the story at, behind that uh they wrote and recorded it uh they just wanted kind of like a like a, was it bluegrass type uh, uh yeah. what they do yeah yeah and charlie just kind of traveled the entire uh state of wisconsin and i met them at uh lambo oh, cool. and uh, i was i was the brat flipper so we had the grill going and right in front of lambo i was the brat flipper but i didn't so, i didn't sing it i have any lines i was just it was kind of cool just to be in the music video with them too but i would say dude yeah, yeah. i've so. only been in one music video <laughs> and all i did was make out with a girl in a hot tub <laughs> I wasn't, wasn't upset about it. Tell me it. about that. Dude, I'm telling so, <laughs> so I actually met, um, his name is Pete, uh, no, Pat Keen. I met him at um, Blue Ox, okay. which is like a big like bluegrass yep. music festival. Um, Horseshoes and Hand Grenades has played there a bunch of yeah, times, yeah. Uh, Adam's group. I met him there and did like, I was doing short interviews backstage there. So I already knew Pat. And then um, I know Char uh, Charlie Flatten and Kyle Lehman and a bunch of these other videographers that are kind mm -hmm. of from the area. So Pat was doing a music video for this song called Love and Drugs. And uh, I got a text message from Charlie and he's like, yo, are you still seeing that girl? I was like, yeah, why? And he goes, would you be in a music video? I was like, I, I guess. He's like, do you still have a hot tub? I was like, I, I, in fact, I do. Yeah, why, what's up? <laughs> would she be in it? Again, what's up? What do you need me to do? Like, right. yes. And he goes, okay. so." We just need you to make out in a hot tub. It's like, okay, <laughs> yeah, sure. Like I'm down, whatever. And then so we got the date, and it wasn't didn't end up using my hot tub. They uh, shot this whole music video in a hotel. They like rented out this hotel yep. or whatever. That sounds creepy, but anyways, they did right. They actually had the permits and everything for it. And so we're sitting in the hot tub, kind of in the foreground, and uh, Pat is like sitting kind of behind us, uh -huh. just kind of like looking kind of miserable, like singing this song while we're just like making out in front of him. Right. <laughs> and there's like the whole crew's there. Like there's probably like 12 people that were involved in filming, but then another like dozen or more like other extras that were all just like watching us. And so for they had us do it for the entire song. Really? Like the three and a half minutes Atta straight. Boy. That's a long time <laughs> to do that, knowing everyone's... It was so awkward. And then he was like, great job. Yep. Let's do another take. Like, <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Atta boy. Yep. So over the course of like 10 minutes, six and a half or whatever, was just straight up making out that whole time on camera. That's well, my whole acting career. 
I wouldn't complain. No, dude, I want to do some more <laughs> acting. In fact, let's do that. Let's do that again. If anyone wants to That's hire me to cool. be in a music video, let's go. So, what are you working on right now? It, you you developed it into being a, a business like four years ago, but mm -hmm. right now, how does your time even kind of look? Do you? I mean, obviously, when you work for yourself and you create content, every day is yep. totally different. Right. But like, how do you make a career out of what what you do? Well, four years ago, like I said, Quick Trip reached out. I uh, I quit my full time job. They hit you up. Yeah. Dude, I'm jealous. I was like, hitting, I was emailing them. Every, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I think I was like the third influencer ever. Chris Cruzy was actually the first. He yeah, probably doesn't he even, does he? Okay. Yeah. He yeah. knows it then. But, uh, but yeah, so I quit my job and, uh, like I was so nervous for that very first like piece of content I made for them. Yeah. But it, it actually crushed it. And I was like, so happy. Like, what was yeah, it? It was, uh, I was promoting one of the new quick trip beers that came out and okay. they wanted to plug the hot spot also. Yeah. And it had to be a three minute long video, which is not easy to do, but it's uh, hard to be funny for three minutes. Yeah. yeah. But it did really well. I got 400,000 views, I guess. So that was pretty decent. And then, yeah. uh, then, uh, yeah, the contract was just, uh, a few videos for that year just to see, yeah. how I could perform and I crushed them all. So was, I think one hit a hit over a million too on Facebook. So Hell they yeah. liked that and then they re-signed me nice. right away. So then I had multiple other uh, brands reach out to me. I think my second brand was uh, Eskimo Ice Fishing and Ion Ice Augers. I'm a really big ice fisherman, so. Yeah, anyone that watches your channel, yeah. I, they know that. Yep, yep. <laughs> you do it all the time. Yeah, so, and they're they're right out of cumberland wisconsin so oh, and dope. they've been there since like 1960 so yeah but uh with another wisconsin brand and then uh had chevy reach out to chevy short, hit you up yeah man what am i doing <laughs> wrong like i gotta hit up all the brands i want to yeah. work with and beg them yeah so i was blessed to uh sign a contract with them that's why oh, I you got, did have a contract with chevy i do still that's why you had that dope truck outside yep. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm a, I'm a, I love trucks, man, off-roading trucks. So yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah. they're like, what kind of vehicle are you on? I'm like, 6.2 liter trail bus with a lift kit and a roll bar. I'm like, they're like done. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Good yeah, for you. So. But that's the thing. Like when you develop an audience that actually fits for something, you yep. know what I mean? Like there's a way to make a living doing pretty much anything. And yes, it, you just have to be savvy about how you do it. Yeah. And, it's funny when people talk about like people being sellouts, which is so stupid because people mm -hmm. are already representing brands and stuff. They don't even like, they're not sponsored by. Right. So if a brand aligns with what you do, mm -hmm. I don't see what the issue is. Right. Like I've been talking to Mayana chocolates. They're like sitting on the table, which I'll give you one. These things are like incredible. Dude, I got to have one of those. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> you can have a bite right now. Actually. Right. I'm talking. It's yeah, incredible. That's the kitchen eat. sink one. Dude. <laughs> so they brand themselves as the best chocolate in the country. Really? Yeah. I tried it and it is. So 80% of chocolate, I guess, is um, actually sourced in Africa. And there's like a lot of problems with slavery and whatnot that goes into that kind of like the blood diamond thing. But this is all sourced in South America. It's wow. like definitely slavery free, uh, but it's made in Wisconsin. Is it really? Yeah. In Spooner. Like how in the, I found That's them randomly on Instagram and I was like, whoa, this looks like pretty good. That's really cool. <laughs> and they so followed good. me back and then we've just been interacting for a while. Um, and then literally yesterday, uh, they dropped, they hand delivered a big box of the world's finest chocolate to me. So dude, that's so good. It's like really thick and heavy and it's good. Delicious. Right? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you can find them on Instagram, Mayana chocolates, Mayana chocolates, uh, or Mayana chocolate.com. And you get 25% off with the promo code passion, which I guess is the biggest like discount they ever do. Really? Yeah. So I'm pretty stoked because I probably got like a couple hundred dollars <laughs> worth of chocolate in my house mm -hmm. now that I don't, it's going to take me a while to eat, but being able to anyways, like line yourself up with companies that actually make sense for you. Mm -hmm. That's the move. Like I would have interviewed the person who owns Mayana anyways, because interviewing somebody who makes chocolate is like something Everybody really dope, chocolate. especially being, <laughs> yeah, especially being from Wisconsin. Like mm -hmm. it just kind of makes sense. And if you position yourself that way, you're not necessarily like turning people away anyways. Like when you do sponsor content, yep. like with me and uh, Chris Cruzy as an example, I hit, I hit up my, the contacts from quick trip and I was like, Hey, would it count for us if we just made content together? Like me and Chris, mm -hmm. and then just did it as collaboration stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. So I hit up Chris and I was like, dude, what do you think about just doing a content day instead of posting, like holding up quick trip stuff? Like, why don't we yep. just go make some funny stuff? Yep. 
dude, well, then those videos perform better than like the other content I'm putting out that's not sponsored. Right. So like party <laughs> on, dude. Like that's, that's, yeah, that's the move. So what are you, uh, what are the kind of the goals now then? Are you still just like trying, are you trying to become the biggest Wisconsin page that's ever existed you probably already are on facebook anyways but like are One you just trying to stay yeah. in that lane or are you trying to expand into something are you doing something totally out of left field like making short films <laughs> like what are you trying to do um yeah as far as the meanwhile on wisconsin page i think it's the bibiggest page as far as uh, one influencer with the word Wisconsin in the title on Facebook. So yeah, that's owned it since day one. So <laughs> you got but, in there early. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I think I'm going to, uh, I only reason I started the Wisconsin thing is because I'm passionate about the whole entire state, everything I do. So I'm just going to keep it yeah, as sure. is right now, but it's going really well. Um, I think the favorite thing about doing this is the freedom I have and the people that I get to meet yeah. along the way. So, and, uh, I don't know. Well, dude, with your time off yep. from your job, yep. you would have been drinking beer, ice fishing, right now you can just do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I love fish fries and old fashions and I actually started up a, a fish fry page on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. It's, I think it's, it's, it's got like 12,000 followers on Facebook. I started it about a year ago. So, wow. And I just usually post once a week, but sure. it's got a decent following. And uh, I just go around Wisconsin, just randomly show up at places, shoot video. Don't even tell them I'm coming. Isn't that kind of what the dive bar guy does? Yeah. I know Sick. Jared. He's a good dude. Yeah. Dive bar. Was it Wisconsin dive bars or something? <laughs> yeah. Wisco dive bar. Wisco dive bar. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We were just hanging out the other couple weekends ago. He's a fun guy, but dude, that like I was telling you off mic, we need to like, there needs to be a directory of mm -hmm. all the creators that are like in different zones because otherwise I like, we don't even know each other exists, yep. which is really hard because even though we're both in the same general space, like we do different things. So we're all in kind of our own little spheres. <laughs> yep. So all of a sudden I'll hear about somebody that I'm like, how you live close by to me. And like, you're huge on this thing. A bunch of people I know, know you, how did I never hear about you before? And there's just not really like a space for it. Chris, somebody, I think, I think you should start up the dude, app. <laughs> somebody needs to take that idea from me. I don't have the time. Somebody needs to do it and make a killing and then mm -hmm. buy an Island with that money. And then let yeah. me visit. That's right. what has to happen. Do you want to do a rapid fire? Are sure. you down? Sure. I like rapid fire ones. I feel like we get lots of fun little clips out of it. All right. Okay. Favorite Girl Scout cookie? Uh, the chocolate caramel, whatever it's called. I love those. The Samoas? Those. Yeah. The ones with the coconut? No, no, no. They're, isn't there caramel ones with wrapped in chocolate? It's kind yeah, of similar yeah, to yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Well, similar, but nowhere near as <laughs> Yeah, this is way better. <laughs> All right. What are your favorite shoes? Uh, Probably, I love Jordan shoes. I love Nikes. Probably the og jordan ones dude yeah. sick i feel like people wouldn't expect that out of me yeah though, right I, i've i've got almost 60 pairs of jordans in my closet right now not even open they're still new in box <laughs> you gotta do a video <laughs> of you like ice fishing wearing some I of know. these shoes some idea. that you've already creased so yep. you don't have to feel horrible right what was your favorite cartoon as a kid <sighs> probably he-man like i'm i grew up back in the 80s you know way back in 85 so i remember <laughs> he-man i was just watching and like all the toys that came from sure. he-man as well so do you love that those are memes all the time these days yeah the Dude, i post memes? a lot of them they Dude. do really well <laughs> <laughs> i love the skeletor memes if you're gonna dress up for anything for halloween what's it gonna be next year oh man that's a good question uh you know oh i actually this is actually pretty funny so i went as a drunk guy wearing flannel last year and i had <laughs> people right. copying me really <laughs> like I went, so yeah, I went, oh, well, actually it was a previous year, drunk guy wearing flannel. I'm like, I just, I made a sign that said drunk guy wearing flannel because I didn't know what to make. Oh, sure. It was yeah. just kind of as a joke and I was wearing flannel. So I just went around to the bars and the bars loved it. And then I had a bunch of people actually start making the same sign and <laughs> it's like a zombie drunk guy pub wearing crawl, flannel. <laughs> except it's the flannel pub crawl. Dude, flannel pub crawl would work in a lot of these Northern Oh, uh, absolutely. Towns. Granted, a lot of them, there's like five people and all of them are at the one bar. So it's hard to just walk to the other nope, bars, nope. <laughs> but that's okay. We need to get like a, a flannel bus, a yeah. flannel printed bus that would be going Dude. around for all those people that are riding their four by fours all drunk. Let's, let's just get a sweet yeah. bus and That'd do be that epic. instead. People would just be drawn to that too. I, Dude, all these <laughs> business ideas, somebody needs to take them from me and make a kill. Okay. What was the last TV show that you binged? Oh man. Ted Lasso probably. What's Ted Lasso? Uh, Jason Sudeikis. It's kind of like uh, it's a uh, he 
he's a coach that has no clue how to uh, coach a soccer team over <laughs> sure. in uh, overseas and. I don't know. It's just so it's, it's, a a, it's a great show. It's comedy, but yeah. really heartfelt. Sure. It's uh, it's probably the most popular shows or of uh, the last few years. But there was like three seasons. But you should check it out. Actually, you, even if you don't like soccer, like I, I don't care about soccer. But it was such a good series, dude. Who do you stu- <laughs> like? Who inspires your comedy the most? Oh man, it was probably Chris Farley back in the Legend. '90s, man. Wasn't was he from Wisconsin? Yeah, Madison. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Dude, what a legend. Chris Farley. Okay. Yep. Cats or dogs? I, I have two dogs. I like cats too, but dog what? lover. I have two labs. I have a chocolate lab and a polar white lab. They're oh, both cool. spoiled. They're yeah, probably... dude yeah <laughs> have you seen the videos i've been posting on my little dog yeah he's dude, such a jerk but he's the best i like i spoil funny. the crap out of that's that funny i just saw him when i was walking yeah in yeah, yeah he's somewhere he's somewhere around <laughs> that one did that one video did really dude, well that was the first you. time i ever went viral yeah. and it's not even like crazy viral but that was the yeah. of the four and a half years of like making stuff that was the first one that like really took off and if anyone hasn't seen it it's just me interviewing my min pin chihuahua mix yep yep and so i've been making too. more of those <laughs> we got to do some guest spot if it really becomes a thing I'll, I'll start hitting up all my friends who have dogs and we'll do little guest spots for yeah, them. You Although you might have to voice over the dog. Yeah, for you sure. Have to, you'll have to practice that. What's your most irrational fear? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. Probably. I ain't scared of shit. <laughs> I don't really have fears. Like, I'm not afraid of snakes or bats or anything. Like, probably just you're not afraid of heights you're not afraid of deep probably water. heights a little bit but sure i don't feel like falling off tall buildings or anything so <laughs> <laughs> you don't get that urge when you're near the edge of a ledge of like for some reason that weird urge to like jump no that's I'm a thing good. i'm not crazy for saying that that's a thing dude it, for real that's a thing okay what's the best part of your day besides all day every day uh Probably like I try to hit the gym as much as possible. And that's where I get a lot of my ideas and inspiration when I'm listening to music and uh, working At the gym? out. Yeah, How well, you... or just when I go for runs, even like sure because I have my own home gym. I'm actually building right now in my garage too. Cool. So I plan on making content in there too for nice. Yeah, inspire people. Do too. you just keep like a notes app in your phone with a, like million ideas? Yeah, I do. Dude, it's literally I need like a get... hundred. Really. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I remember I interviewed Sven Johnson. He said that he has just like the longest list ever. And he basically yep. just scrolls through and picks one he thinks is like feasible to record mm-hmm. that day. Mm-hmm. I need to start backlogging more ideas. What's the worst part about your day? Mm, worst part? Is there really a bad part of Ryan <laughs> Rubel's day? No, I don't know. Uh, well, how about this? What's the worst part about what you do for a living? Because oh. anybody who does, like, it doesn't matter what it is. There's parts that you don't like. Yeah. I guess on social media, there's people that say things that aren't true and then sure. i always go on there and correct them but yeah i don't like that i always make sure i correct them too dude they there's say something yeah. weird about me that's not true because you can make people look bad dude there's <laughs> a lot of trolls out there and they don't realize how much harm that they cause there's yep. a lot of mean people it's pretty crazy because yeah. ever since i started doing this like i was kind of always the skateboarding guy in town obviously a lot of people skate but i've skated my whole life and like own the skateboard shop whatever i was really blown away and surprised by how many people in the skateboarding community, granted, I will still say that 90% plus, mm. still super cool with, yep. but there's just a bunch of trolls that yeah. have like popped up and are just really, really mean to me. Yeah. And it's kind of mind blowing because I'm like, I've never been bullied until now in my mid thirties. Mm-hmm. Like, and now I'm being bullied and trolled by people. It blows my mind and it's skateboarders. Yeah, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. They Dude, should be you your know buddies. How much, I'm like, you know how much I've done for you? That <laughs> right. skate park you spend every day at is there. Right. I'm not the only one, but I put in a ton to get that built. Yeah. That would not be there if it weren't for me. But yeah. that's all right. Trolls come along with everything. Yep. And unfortunately, it's awful. What's going along with trolls? What's the funniest insult you've ever gotten? Or the funniest like comment you've ever gotten that was a troll? Oh, uh, I, th- I think it's funny. Like People think my accent is fake and he's like this dude's just faking it and i'm just talking normal and i like i think that's funny like i just you laugh all the, the time north. i do it's there <laughs> yeah. it's not going anywhere either but i, I don't know dude like, i didn't realize i had any yeah. and then i somebody was listening to my show um i forget where i was i had like traveled somewhere totally different right mm-hmm. and met somebody i think this girl was in like peru or somewhere and she was like you don't even realize how bad your accent is yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? I don't sound like super from Wisconsin. She goes, no, but like the language you use. Yep. She's like, nobody says sick. 
Really? It's like, oh, I thought people said that. <laughs> it's like rad. Nobody says rad. I'm like, oh, I thought that was like normal things right. for people to say, but apparently depends not. Depends on who you are. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> What's the best thing about Wisconsin? Man, I think it's a little bit of everything. The Dude. people are so laid back. Like, I don't know. Like, I love just like, going around, hanging out, find, like talking to new people. Yeah. Like if I go to a bar or something, people, somebody will come up to me and they'll be like super nice. And they'll say like, man, your video just made my day. Like I appreciate everything you do. So I kind of love like how nice people are. Like I've never had a negative comment in person ever. Like no, for yeah, real, yeah. but I don't know. Like, dude, that's why I'm jealous Midwest of Wisco Wisconsin. dive bars. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody loves just, him. Yeah, going. Well, I'm just saying, like, going to different dive bars, you never have a bad time in Wisconsin. That is the best thing about Wisconsin. Right. Worst thing about Wisconsin, in my opinion, I hate winters, but you're an ice fisherman, so that's not true yeah. for you. What's the worst part for you? I think it's right in between ice fishing and spring when there's nothing but mud, and I can't do, like, ice fishing or, like, it's just crappy You're outside. not into mudding yet. I'm not into the... Well, I could be, but... You don't want to... I, I don't like the in-between season and between there, because... It's in between summer and yeah. ice fishing. Yeah. Okay. I feel, I, for me, uh, spring's the best time because yeah. it's like, I it's fall. There's the impending doom for me that winter's almost here, mm -hmm. so it's hard for me to really enjoy. Spring is like, oh, the next while of my life is going to be enjoyable. Who's your favorite content creator? Doesn't have to be Wisconsin. Hmm. Let me think. I think I don't know. There's so many that I love. Um, do you follow? Ed Bassmaster? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Look him up. He's he's funny, hilarious. He's a stand-up comedian too, but he has so many different characters that he does. It's kind of hard to explain. He does a little bit of everything, but sure. Look him up. I think I, you'll be. I think you'll be laughing. I'm gonna. I will look it up, and I'm gonna need you to connect me with every other Wisconsin influencer that yeah. exists. Okay. If if money didn't matter at all, how would you spend your time? Oh, uh, probably just traveling and doing everything I love and then uh, I don't know meeting as many people as I can and hopefully inspire them along the way too so doing basically what you're basically doing. what I'm doing right now <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> Chris Cruzy is the myth the man the legend I can't wait to hang out with him some more I I convinced him granted I don't know if he would actually follow through with this I think he would because he's a nice guy but during the show he told me that I have like unlimited permission to camp on his property for real and he's got two different like little <laughs> ponds yeah. i'm probably gonna do that this summer just like show up at his house say dog Dude, i'm driving over there but i would just go without saying anything even just show up <laughs> and just you're like hey good morning just walk out of your tent i'm like what's up chris <laughs> Dude, what the funny you, thing how's is your day be cool with it. <laughs> yeah like i don't think he would really care he'd come out in his sweatshirt with his gym shorts on and be like oh what's up right <laughs> he's the best okay so sometimes you put in a lot of work to create things mm -hmm. and a lot of times they don't work right mm -hmm. like it which is funny because other times you put no energy into you just have this idea and it's like boom like when i had the video of viral of my dog that was just like a very my camera equipment's already set up for something else like I'll just do this because it'd be funny. Yeah. I assumed it wasn't going to, no yeah. one would care. And then yeah. for whatever reason, people cared. Yeah. What's the story of a video that you put a bunch of time and energy into that didn't work? Oh man. Uh, I'm trying to think probably some of my older, like three minute long videos, which take quite a while to try to get, uh, I don't know. Three minutes is a while to try to make it what, what what's the word i don't know sure make it so give me a description <laughs> to make it work yeah give me a description of like what one of these would have looked like and why do you think it didn't work uh well i think right off the bat you need it to be popping and interesting right away and if you don't have the audience interest right away they're probably not even going to watch it so sure. you need that but i don't know like i guess i don't really have like a good example because my stuff usually does decent but Okay, so let's I, I really expect it to do better. Sure. But, yeah. Let's pick a video that did really well. Tell me about the, the video and then explain what was it about it that made it work. Okay. So I can replicate it, basically. Okay, over. <laughs> <laughs> so I just woke up uh, two weeks ago, St. Patrick's Day. I, uh, I, you know, Chicago River is always dyed green for St. Patrick's Day. So I, I feel like that's bad for the environment. Yeah. I feel like people are woke enough that yeah. they wouldn't do something that kills fish. But whenever I see that every yep. year... I'm like, this has got to yeah. be horrible. But so, anyways, continue. <laughs> so I woke up and I'm like, 
I got to pick on uh, the Chicago River again, or a little bit. So I, I did a real quick video, and I said, uh, "Oh, I see uh, Chicago dyed the river again to uh, show that Green Bay owns uh, the Bears." <laughs> uh, that was nice of them. I hear it's been a tradition since back in 1985, and then uh, oh, it just blew up to like four million views for no reason. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Took like ten seconds. <laughs> sure. Why do you think? Why do you think it did so well? Because it was same day as they died the river, and it was right yeah, away sure. in the morning, and everyone was probably talking about it. But sure. I think the bad thing was it reached more Bears fans than Packers fans, so I didn't really gain a ton off of it, but sure. there's probably a lot of angry Chicago people. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was, dude. Yeah, they got to like lighten up a little bit, but I suppose when you I'm just like, lose everything. Yeah. See, it, the Wisconsin came out of me. I just said, I suppose. There you go. Oh, suppose. no. <laughs> you're, you're making it happen. Yeah. But no, I think a big part of it is you got to have something that hooks right away, but <clears> mm -hmm. if you have something that's shareable yep. right and like those people that's very shareable think about yeah. how many packers fans sent that to their bears fans right. friends right. just like <laughs> yeah like that's the move i gotta figure out how i can post stuff that's more shareable right because that's apparently what happened with my dog video yeah because everyone loved the dog way more than anything i've ever made i know your dog is like shivering too that makes it even cuter and then he's like i don't know what's going on dude but then i had a bunch of people like comment on there like oh that poor dog yeah. look at how anxious he is and i'm like have you ever met he's a dog of this like breed that. yeah they literally shake all day every day yeah. that's that's all they do yep. like i've had I, I rescued him 12 years ago that is his normal state of being yep. i promise i kind of figured <laughs> Okay, so you have any budget, you can go for 30 days around the state of Wisconsin, you can bring, let's say, two other people, mm -hmm. and we'll say like influencer type people, people you're going to create content with. Yep. Where are going to be the main locations you're going to go on this tour? Who are you bringing with that's going to make the funniest content for everybody? Oh, funniest. Uh, does it have to be funny? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Actually, we were just talking about my buddy Ed the Diver yeah who you are gonna interview right yeah super stoked so about that. he he's uh he's he's blowing up like i met him a year ago and we dove together but so he's I, basically he's a wisconsin-based diver that makes content based on like um cleaning up the rivers yep. and lakes and stuff yep. right that's kind of his thing yep okay and uh yeah, he's got a really good following now it's doing well and i think he might even get his own tv show but i think i would love to take him because he's a really funny and fun dude behind the scenes too oh cool and then uh who else like i don't know i might as well just bring chris cruzy with because he's, say, he's so him. like i think we would all three like crush it just being ourselves like yeah i don't dude. know being a few wisconsin dudes maybe do some diving and then hit some bars and then maybe i don't know over in the green bay area hit a packer game or something like that but dude see i've always wanted to have a theme song yeah. If I had Chris Cruzy <laughs> hanging out with me all the time, I could rope him into walking behind me with his guitar. And yep. then it, it would be, yeah, it would be legendary. I think I think a mini series of that needs to happen at some point. Yeah, for real. Okay, so when you do things that you're passionate about for a living, you get to have really unique experiences. Told you about this before. Mm -hmm. um, that make everything worth it, even though usually it's not about the money. Sometimes money comes, but typically that's not the reason that you do it mm -hmm. because you could make more money doing other things the vast majority of the time. Although maybe not with that. Chevy sponsorship. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. I got to get on your level. <laughs> I, gotta, I don't even drive a Chevy, but now I want one. Um, but anyways, can you share a story of a unique experience that happened to you that you're really grateful for? Absolutely. So I've been going to Lambeau Field since like 1989, 35. This would be my 36th season in a row. Just a huge Packer fan. And at least then, one game every season. Yeah, at least one game, training camp, just going to visit, whatever. Um, and then... Uh, Two years ago, I got to go to Lambo and shoot content inside Lambo with Rashawn Gary, who's now one of the huge team leaders of the Packers. It yeah. was for the Packers, quick trip, and uh, you know, just hanging out with like Rashawn and just getting to know him and yeah. like spend like a half a day with him. He's like a super, extremely nice dude, and I think this really isn't a problem, but he the biggest problem we had with Rashawn was he wouldn't stop laughing and smiling the whole time when we were trying to shoot. So it's actually a good problem to have because we had so much fun, yeah. like even behind the scenes, like doing the, the Lambo leap with him and just messing around and stuff. But that was like a dream come true. What was the video? I think I remember <clears throat> seeing it. What was the video? Like what, um, what was the premise? We were promoting it? pothole pizza for quick trip <laughs> and they sell, there's a big quick trip 
uh, store inside Lambo yeah. where we shot it too. So, did, but yeah, did the your contacts from Quick Trip just like email you and say, "Hey, would you be interested in this?" Mm-hmm. Or is this something you pitched to them, or how did that work? They reached out and they asked me to come up with the idea, write the script, and then uh, actually Paige and Kendra were in the video too. Oh, so cool. There was a big crew of us and then uh, a bunch of people like from the Packers, yeah. they were there making sure we didn't say the wrong thing, thing because there's so many trademark things you can't talk about when you're shooting a video like that. Oh, like you can't say that. players names besides Rashawn. You can't say Lambo Leap because Lambo Leap is actually trademarked by Robert Brooks. Really? Yeah. I bet you didn't know that. No, I did not know that. <laughs> so even though Leroy created it, yeah. uh, Robert uh, brought it back with his like music video back in the mid to late nineties. He did the Lambo leap uh, music video and he trademarked at the same time. So Leroy can't even put that like on his vodka that he sells because it's trademarked by Robert Brooks and we couldn't say it in the video either. So we had to say jump in the stands. Weird. <laughs> Dude, there you, Brooks needs to release yeah, that yeah. info. Like, come on, yeah, man. You're, yeah. Wow. But it was smart of him to do that. No, <laughs> it was a genius move of him to <laughs> yep. do it. I'm not ups- uh, Yeah, I'm upset about it because I want to be able to say Lambo Leap. Yeah. Why? Well, you can't if <laughs> I, I, you just I can't inside Lambo. it's directly yeah. associated with the Packers. Yeah, because sure. they don't want to get sued because yeah, Quick totally. Trip uh, and Packers. Man, they're what big. am I doing wrong? <laughs> I've never, like, people don't contact me for these types of things. I want to go, in, I went over to Lambo um, one random day. I was sitting. Uh, sitting in my hot tub. Look at me talk about myself. But sitting in my hot tub, and I was like scrolling through my phone, Mm -hmm. and I'm like, who should I interview? Because I'm always like looking around. I get a lot of people asking to do interviews, and I do a lot of interviews. It's not like hard to find people, but it's hard to like, uh, which I was talking to you off mic, trying to find like Wisconsin-based people that have like some kind of significance in one area or whatever, but there isn't a directory, right? So Mm -hmm. I'm like always trying to think of like, well, who would make a really cool story that I haven't connected with before? And for whatever reason, it crossed my mind, and I was like, "Oh, I feel like a maybe the show's big enough to interview a Packers player." Yeah, like that'd be kind of dope. I wonder. And then I like looked it up, and I was assuming like, you know, the main players. Like, I'm not going to get a hold of Rogers. This is Rogers at the time. Right. So I'm not going to get a hold of him. But I wonder if like some of the dudes that are lower on the 53 man roster, mm-hmm. like they got to be reachable, right? Maybe. Mm-hmm. And I sent like a dozen uh, emails and Dominic Daphne, if you remember him, he, yep. he was a tight end for us. Yep. Yeah. I like the next day I woke up and I had a DM back from him. He's like, yeah, I'll be in, you know, back for training camp in June if you want. That's awesome. Like, Sick. <laughs> so I went over there, got a Jersey, I uh, got it signed. And then we recorded an interview at like the, one of the apartment buildings that like, I don't know that the Packers necessarily own it, but it's all Packers players that live yep. in the building. Because yep. a lot of Packers players, people probably don't, don't necessarily know this, but they don't all buy houses. Right. Because they're not necessarily here for a long time. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah. they have like big fancy apartment building facility um, that I went to. And it was really cool being like growing up as big of a Packers fan as I was, yep. like being able to sit like you put these people up on a pedestal as if they're like not just regular people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As yep. much as I don't fan out on people, generally speaking, because I meet big music artists and stuff, Packers players, I'll still fan out on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, but getting to do that whole thing was really surreal. <laughs> and then like looking at it as like, wow, that was actually part of what I did for like work though. Yeah. Like that's pretty dope, dude. <laughs> Isn't that pretty cool? Like, like all it takes is like one guy like him and then mm-hmm. you can still keep getting more and more because they already knew you interviewed at least one player right keep asking and asking and you probably keep getting bigger and bigger players so that's Dude, all it takes yeah yeah <laughs> you need to hook me up with Rashawn gary he's not too big <laughs> he's gonna do it yeah no, i'm just kidding i don't think he ever does long form interviews but anyways dude Thank you so much for coming over and doing this. This was yeah. dope, and we could definitely do a part two anytime. I know you were telling me off mic that you're trying to get something set up over at your house. I would love to help you set that up and then come on your show, and I could definitely like add more to my accent. For Absolutely. It. Yeah, I could like, pretend to be more Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. For, I am born and raised in Wisconsin. I've spent like my whole life here. I just don't do the, oops, let me squeeze right past you there. <laughs> I don't usually talk like that. But <laughs> Yeah, you're not fully up north. You're a little more down south. Yeah, see, I got a cabin that's like up north by Cable, Wisconsin. Yep, so I've yep. spent time up there, but I'm younger and I'm from the big city of Eau Claire. So yep. I'm, a, I'm I, a city boy. I call this the South Woods. <laughs> <laughs> the cornfields. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.